Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So, in our bioelectronics class, these are the contents. Okay, so our first topic is safe operating area for power MOSFET. Okay, so I have taken I have taken the classes on power MOSFET. You could check on my previous videos also. Okay, so this is the safe operating area for power MOSFET. Okay, so the x-axis actually indicates the VDS and y-axis uh, the ID or drain current. Okay, and uh, this is the drain to source voltage. But the only difference is that the VDS and the ID are in the logarithmic scale. Okay, why uh, do I consider that uh, this uh, ID and VDS uh, axis are in the logarithmic scale? Why? Because the value of the VDS and ID is very very small. Okay, so in order to know better or have clear idea about the value of VDS and ID, we need to increase the scaling of these VDS and ID. That is why the VDS and ID are constructed uh, or have formed in the logarithmic scale. So this is all about the scaling of ID and VDS. Okay. So this actually signifies some area. Okay. So to increase the current, the value of the voltage should be decreased and should be within this limit. For example, the for proper increase of VDS beyond the 20 volt range. Okay. So beyond the 20 volt range, the current should be decreased over here. So within the 20 volt range, we could say that the current is within this range, but beyond the 20 volt range, the current should be minimized and it is being located within this area range. Okay. Is that clear? This is nothing but the safe operating area for power MOSFET. Why this is very important? As we know that the power is nothing but the multiplication of voltage and current. Okay. So, to lower the power loss in any type of device, this safe operating area concept is very very important and uh, for the temperature enhancement we need to decrease the voltage and current according to that okay so in order to lower the temperature of the overall device the voltage and current range should be limited within some limited range okay and these are some switching times okay so, for the 1 millisecond time period of turn on of the power MOSFET device, the safe operating area is this one, is within this area. And uh, for 0 0.1 milli millisecond, the safe operating area is this one, up to this uh, and this one, okay? And uh, 0 0.01 and so on, okay? You can see that if we decrease the turn on time or duration of the pulse of the power MOSFET device, the safe operating area is increasing and uh, we can experiment the voltage and the current range uh, by that. Is that clear? Why for 0 0.01 millisecond time period as you can see that the area is this one the larger area for 0 0.1 millisecond the area is this one okay so this area is the safe operating area for the time 0 0.1 millisecond for the previous one the same 0 0.01 millisecond and the last one is the safe operating area is uh, 1 millisecond so if the turn on time is greater then that will automatically increase the safe operating area. Okay. 
junction temperature is very very important consideration for this type of uh, power electronics devices so the junction temperature is dependent on the safe operating range or safe operating area understand okay so this ad is actually the maximum dc limit beyond this limit the current should be decreased uh, and it is in this range and ec is for the minimization of this temp uh, junction temperature range so this is the safe operating area i want to repeat the important part that if you increase the turn on time okay so the incre increase of the turn on time is from upper to lower one 0 0.01011 okay and that actually further decreases the safe operating range or safe operating area so this is all about our first topic on safe operating area for power mosfet so our next one of our topic is soa for igbt or safe operating area for igbt okay for uh, power mosfet consideration the reverse bias forward bias safe operating areas are same but here for the igbt these are two different concepts the lower portion is for the forward bias operation and it is uh, same just like our power mosfet okay so further increase of the current sorry further increase of the time on period of our uh, device which consist that the lower of the area so in addition you if you want to increase the time period then the areas or safe operating area for forward bias junction is reduced or forward bias areas is reduced so safe operating area is very very important for our safer operation or corrective operation of our device and this is for the reverse bias operation here why this is very very important or it is different uh, compared with our um, forward bias along with our uh, reverse bias here a latch up operation is been happened here what is latch up latch up means beyond latch up or beyond that operation the device is no longer dependent on the current or dependent on the voltage this things are independent and we cannot control the operation of the igbt which which applies or which consists that the device may get damaged okay so there is a voltage drop across the junction say across junction j2 the capacitor is cj2 okay so the voltage drop is nothing but cj2 multiplied with dpce divided by dt okay so this is the drop which actually which is actually the main reason for our increase of our dpce by dt or for the latch up of our operation so we need to shorten the time period or we need to shorten this factor to prevent the latch up operation of our igbt characteristic so here in the right hand side you can sense that or you can see that for further increase of the dvc dt the area is decreased or the reverse bias safe operating area is decreased okay so i, I have told you for this value the safe operating area is this one and for this value or the value of the dvc dt 
the SEP operating uh, reverse bias to SEP operating area is this one and so on. Okay, you can see that for further increase of this value dvc dt the area of our reverse bias shape operating area is decreased over there okay so this is for the reverse biased operation and this is for the forward biased operation and for the forward biased operation i also repeat i one second repeat that this is similar with the power mosfet and uh, this range is uh, for the dc voltage control so to increase the voltage in the x axis we need to lower the current over here so for further in increase of the voltage we need to lower the current and the, the current or the power should be within this area range or within this forward bust shape operating area and so on so for 100 microsecond the area is increased and uh, for the one microsecond the area is this one okay so area is this one so this is all about our perfect operation for forward burst and reverse burst shape operating area for our IGBT operation and all these operations are very very important because we need to concentrate on the temperature perspective also because if we increase the temperature uncontrollably then the junction temperature is not within our limit and uh, we cannot control the voltage or current within our range and uh, that may get damaged the overall device of the IGBT. So this is the overall explanation of our safe operating area for IGBT operation. So our next on our chart is static induction transistor. So this is the overall formation or overall diagram or overall schematic of our static induction transistor. Okay. And this is the symbol of our uh, device. And uh, this arrow is actually indicating the there is a flow from drain to source and you can see over here from drain to source. So the electron is flowing from drain to source and these uh, dashed are the electron flow. You could see over here. Okay. So this sign actually indicates the electron flow of our device. Okay. So by using this simple schematic or by using this uh, symbol you can sense or you can feel that or you can identify it, the current flow or the electron flow that I am uh, telling you over here. Okay. So this is the overall structure and this is the symbol. The overall structure is over here. Here uh, this dashed portion are our insulator portion. This, this outer dashed portion our insu insulator and on that insulator portion the metal junctions are being formed so these are the metal portions on this uh, metal portion the terminals are formed which is nothing but the gate source and the drain uh, the drain is formed in the lower parts and here the metal part is being present over here so these are the terminals over here and you could see that the source and the drain is connected through a load and the VDS is connected in between that. The drain portion is connected and the polarity of the drain is positive and the source is negative. Okay. So when the S1 is closed or when S1 is open. Okay. So when S1 is open what is the exact meaning? The same thing is being processed for our uh, power MOSFET consideration when the gate source is open. So there is no current being thrown in from drain to source. Why? Because the drain to source is in the reverse biased operation or reverse biased 
direction as you could see that the minus is connected with the source and the plus is drain okay so the gate source voltage or the gate uh, source because of this gate source voltage in, there is no additional electron is being thrown in in this region so the added path is not being thrown because the n is not short circuited in between the p plus and n okay so the conduction path is been missing but if you close to the switch if the s1 is closed the s1 is closed then i can feel that that the p plus and n n minus junction are directly connected and there is a path in between the source and drain okay the p plus so these p plus p plus p plus p plus are some heavily doped uh, heavily doped p region and n plus is also the heavily doped uh, heavily doped n plus region and n minus region of our uh, static induction transistor okay so these heavily doped region are actually injecting our majority carriers and it actually helps us or enhances uh, the chance to create a connection in between this drain and source and uh, that will uh, helpful or uh, that will be helpful for our device to conduct in between the drain and source okay uh, for and uh, i want to mention that that the static induction transistor is always the turn on device okay why this is turn on device as you could sense that after i closing the switch s1 the vgs is operating and the gate source voltage because of this gate source voltage there is some additional current and the additional current actually giving some additional charges in the p plus region in the p plus region over here and this p plus region actually injects some additional hole in the n region and vice versa and uh, the proper bridge or the, uh, the conduction between the drain and source is properly been analyzed by me if you still don't understand this portion please check my previous video on power mosfet igbt or bipolar junction transistor on that video i have i had thoroughly explained all the concepts or all the connection between the drain and source so i don't want to uh, go more details over here okay so the source and drain connection is been formed and this solid line is the current flow okay so the current is actually flowing uh, is actually flowing from source to drain so this red line or this red direction is the current flow so the current is being flowing from source uh, to drain okay if you close or uh, if you open the switch then uh, there are number of there are further decrease of additional uh, carriers uh, in between the p plus n junction Uh, and which means we could we can decrease the carriers in between the p plus n region and uh, by using that concept uh, we can turn off the static induction transistor okay so that is the turn off process okay but when if we are telling that when the s1 is open then which means that vgs is is equal to zero this is for the first condition but when the vgs is positive or vgs is in the positive range then there is a healthy amount of current flow is uh, current is been thrown from uh, source to drain and the electron is flown from drain to source uh, drain to source and it is been Uh, drawn uh, throughout our video by this dotted line so this dotted line is nothing but the electron flow and the solid line are our current flow okay but 
the condition of the VGS is equal to zero is been properly analyzed. When the gate source voltage is uh, positive, that is been analyzed by me too. But what about when we are applying the negative voltage? VGS is equal to negative voltage. Or you could, or if we reverse the polarity of this VGS terminal. For here, this is plus and minus. But if we reverse the polarity, then the VGS minus polarity is been the upper portion is the minus, the lower portion is the plus. So, the BGS is reverse biased. So, what is that about, what is the operating region of this there? Or, what is the importance to connect the BGS in the reverse direction? What is the best significance of that? If we connect the BGS, then the P plus N minus, so this is the N, N region, the P plus N minus actually forms a uh, uh, depletion layer. Okay, uh, so uh, additional depletion layer is formed over here. Okay, so you could see that so the additional depletion layer is formed if we connect the VGS in the reverse direction. Okay, or in the reverse polarity. Okay, so the depletion layer is been formed. Uh, so this is the depletion layer. This is the depletion layer. So, this, this depletion layer is formed in between this P plus and N minus. Okay. Here, the depletion layer is formed. So, you could see that this depletion layer actually prevents the connection between the drain and source. And the current is minimized by this depletion layer. Or, in total, or by this result, I should say that I am preventing the connection between the source and drain and the current is minimized by this depletion layer. Is that clear? Okay. So, in the another part, if you increase the voltage of BGS or if you increase the voltage of BGS in the or the polarity of uh, is similar, the upper portion is minus and the lower portion is plus, then the depletion layer is uh, growing stronger and it is formed like this one. Okay, and uh, this consecutive depletion layer actually short circuited with the uh, adjacent or uh, next to that region and it actually forms a complete uh, depletion layer in between this junction. So, the latch up operation is been happened over there. Okay, so I can see that or I can say that the drain current and the source uh, drain and the source are not being connected. Why? Because if the current is being thrown over here and it is obstructed in our depletion region or over here. So, the connection is being lost in between the drain and source. Okay. And which is why uh, the I finally can say that the depletion layer is stronger in the uh, in this operation or in this portion if I increase the gate to, gate to source voltage and the polarity of our gate to source voltage is reversed. Okay. So, this is the one ultimate option to turn off our uh, static induction transistor. But, there is some problem over here um, because of some loss in the current or uh, if the voltage across this depletion layer is huge then I can say that the if the voltage across this depletion layer is huge or we can't overcome this uh, over, overall voltage to uh, form a connection between this drain and source and the current is not flown from drain to source that is why uh, the latch up operation is very very important for static induction transistor and we need to prevent the latch up operation at any cost or uh, here the current is been thrown but the voltage is huge so the voltage is always huge and the current is been thrown which actually results the power is also huge uh, because V and I are multiplied and which actually forms the power loss so the overall power loss is huge if we increase the gate to source voltage and that results 
uh, heat uh, hot spot across this P plus N minus junction or hot spot across this uh, electric field and which actually results uh, ice core loss and we know that the temperature is very very important for forward bars and reverse bars operation and that may get that uh, may result the proper damage or the complete damage of our static induction transistor okay so this device is very very popular uh, for our power electronics uh, activities okay i am not been here for basic uh, btech course or basic mtech course i am uh, like to concentrate this for the research purpose also because the proper analysis or the complete analysis is being analyzed by me and i can guarantee you that no one is uh, uh, some few videos may uh, may be there i don't want to check there because i have the confidence to analysis any type of devices or any type of subjects that i am mentioning in my previous video okay so i am not uh, looking at the other videos i am believing or i have the ultimate belief that no one can describe this type of analysis or in particular the static induction transistor is totally missing from the, uh, their videos but i don't believe in that i believe that if i am completing some subject i should concentrate the total completion of that subject that is why i am telling uh, i am completing the static induction transistor so this is the overall uh, consideration or overall explanation of our static induction transistor i think all gaps all things are properly analyzed by me and if you still have some problems please let me know in the comment section below so this is the total explanation of our static induction transistor so our last and most consistent uh, most consistent power electronics device is mos control thyristor okay so this is the overall structure of our mos control thyristor and this is the anode terminal and the processing is same here the silicon oxide insulators are been formed and on top of uh, that insulating element the gate terminal anode terminal and uh, in the downside you could see that the cathode terminal is been formed okay so these three terminals are here and just like our um, power mosfet consideration you could add many amount of uh, many number of uh, mos control thyristor in a single chip uh, to enhance the current uh, current capability or to increase the voltage current rating of our overall circuit okay so what is mos control thyristor this is the uh, basic structure of the mos control thyristor here uh, on the left hand side uh, you can mention or you can say that see that that this is the op pet okay and uh, in the right hand side the in channel on um, or in channel fed are there or on fed are there okay so this is the basic structure of our mos control thyristor and in the upper part this is the symbol of our mos control thyristor device okay okay so this is the gate terminal and this is the anode and this is the cathode terminal of our um, of our mos control thyristor this is the overall hardware device or hardware structure of our um, uh, mos control thyristor and in the left hand side this is the equivalent circuit of our uh, mos control thyristor device okay and this device is very very important for us uh, for Uh, our industrial operation and when it is been invented uh, all the engineers predicted that that uh, this device might um, use in the operation of igbt power mosfet and any type of operations uh, 
uh, all this been replaced by this device. But uh, as per prediction, that uh, could not be hap could not been happened because of some limitations that I will tell later. Before that, first of all, the important part is our equivalent circuit consideration. Okay, so this structure is equivalent with this one okay is equivalent with uh, this structure okay so this circuit uh, this hardware model i can say that this is the equivalent circuit okay so in the left hand side the gate terminal is been formed and in the upper part the anode is been present and in the lower part the cathode is been present okay and the firing signal is being formed over here and the firing signal uh, to wants to turn on our device or in short to make a proper connection between the anode and cathode because of the firing of the gate because of the firing of the gate we need to negatively connect it the gate voltage terminal or we need to send the negative voltage pulse for the on state terminal okay uh, on state with respect to the anode and here i want to say another thing another important part over here that for the thyristor consideration we are taking the cathode portion as our reference uh, terminal uh, uh, cathode is our reference terminal compared with gate but here uh, the anode is being taken as reference uh, with respect to our gate okay so that is the main difference in terms of uh, terminals um, compared with our uh, compare compare with our thyristor um, with our MOS control thyristor okay our conventional thyristor okay so to turn on our device or to make a proper connection between the anode and cathode we need to send a negative pulse you could see that that on okay on of minus 7 volt is been applied in the gate terminal which so this one is minus this one is plus because of negative polarity okay which actually may which actually turns on our p channel here p channel fit or on fit okay so this p channel fit is turned uh, on okay and because of uh, this turn on you could see by this green signal uh, the current is been thrown and here the short circuited time terminal is been thrown over here that is why the current is flown uh, and the current is coming over here and uh, because of the short circuited path the current is been formed or is been thrown in uh, and which actually turns on our pnp thyristor pnp transistor sorry pnp transistor which actually turns on the pnp transistor okay and in the another part uh, the base uh, here the anode and cathode terminals are being formed okay and the pnp is turned on because of the p channel on fit okay and um, pnp is turned on but that is not been properly connected between the anode and cathode okay so in order to conduct or in order to connect in between the anode and cathode you need to turn on the npn also okay so the PNP is turned on. So this solution is, uh, this problem is cleared as the current is being uh, raised over here. Okay. And the anode and cathode is turned on and because of this full conduction of the anode and cathode here, uh, the current is being thrown over here. And because of this, the base is actually helping the main firing because I had told you in my earlier classes that if the base current is missing, there is no connection in between the anode and cathode for our thyristor, uh, sorry, for our transistor operation. Okay. So, because of this current phone, 
in between the anode and cathode on the PNP junction, the base is fired. And because of this firing of the base, the buffer connection be, uh, of the NPN transistor is been formed and there is a buffer connection in between the uh, NPN or between the collector and emitter uh, in, of the NPN transistor. Okay. So, a proper path is been formed. The anode, uh, uh, the gate is been fired because of the negative voltage and uh, the on-channel, on P-channel uh, P fate is turned on. Because of this turned on, the anode is been fired and the PNP is turned on. PNP is turned on, which actually enhances the chances to turn on the NPN and the proper symbol or the proper confirmation of the turn on process is been complete. Okay, so negative, I want to repeat the same steps over here. Negative charge, turn on the P channel on FET, turn on the PNP and enhances the base current of the NPN transistor, turn on the NPN and proper connection between the anode and cathode. So these are the following steps that is been used to turn on our device. Okay, so this is for the negative pulse voltage. And here I want to say once again that the off state N channel that is been shown in the left side, this is turn off for this type of operation. Okay, but to turn off our overall, um, overall MOS control thyristor or MOS in short, we need to send a positive pulse according with our gate. Okay. So that has been reversed. Okay. So the because of this positive pulse, because of this positive pulse, now the off head is turned on. Okay. The off head, off head is turned on. Okay. And as the off head is turned on, the external current is being extracted from the base terminal so this is the base terminal of the pnp the external current is being extracted from the base terminal of the pnp so first of all because of the uh, additional losses or because of some absence of the base current in the pnp junction first the pnp is turned off and because of uh, the connection in the NPN transistor or the connection loss in the NPN transistor, the additional current is lost in the base current for the NPN transistor, um, NPN transistor also, which actually turns off the NPN operation also. Is that clear? Okay. So, turn off operation is very, very easy. The off pad is turned on and owning to this, or reason, the proper reason to this, the excess current is being extracted from these two NPN and PNP transistor for our operation. And uh, the first, the base current is being extracted and the current is being thrown in this direction from right to left. Okay. And because of the missing of the base current, the PNP is first turned off and which results uh, less amount of current in the uh, NPN transistor also and uh, lastly the NPN will turn off and uh, once again uh, we can start our operation and the anode and cathode uh, connection is been lost and uh, we can say that this is the proper method or proper methodology to turn off our uh, MOS control thyristor device okay so this is the total explanation of my overall MOS control thyristor operation. And uh, lastly, I want to say another thing that uh, as I have told you in my uh, previous uh, some, uh, some minutes ago that these uh, devices are very, very versatile and um, every engineer uh, when this type of devices was invented, they have thought that all the operations of IGBT 
all the operations of IGBT, power MOSFET, uh, BJT, and power diodes. All these operations are replaced by this only device, the MOS control thyristor. But here are some losses are huge because of some additional junction is being present over here. Okay, that actually results the heating loss across this uh, junction. This junction J2, J, uh, J3, there is some capacitive voltage drop across this junction. Okay, and uh, you could um, see that for the, for say for the junction J3, the voltage across this as uh, dv by dt c j3 by dv by dt okay so this type of voltage drop actually increases the overall temperature of the device and which is the down point or disadvantage of our mos control thyristor so this is the total explanation of my mos control thyristor and if you don't understand any of my points please let me know in the comment section below and uh, you could join my telegraph channel also. Uh, there also you can comment or you can uh, share some problems with me. Okay, so stay tuned uh, with my channel. And <clears throat> so this is the overall explanation of the MOS control thyristor. So our next on our topic is new semiconductor material. Okay, so in our previous analysis or in our previous devices, all these things are manufactured on the silicon silicon materials. Okay, on a silicon material, silicon chips. Okay, so on the silicon chips, we can form many types of IGBT power MOSFET uh, in uh, parallel operation. For parallel operation, we could form many type of PN, uh, P junction, or all these junctions are being formed on the silicon type of devices okay but in the another device which is been formed that is been named is the silicon carbide okay on this uh, silicon carbide the losses are less and the heat uh, trans heat resistant uh, characteristic is more uh, that enhances the voltage and the current rating of our overall circuit so in our uh, majority operation, we are still using the silicon type of semiconductor devices for our um, any type of uh, connection or any type of parallel series connection and all these things have been formed on the silicon. But we can't use the germanium material. Why? Because germanium is uh, very, very poor. Germanium is very very poor for conductivity purpose. That is why the resistance loss or the heat loss is more. That is the first reason. Uh, that is why we can't use the germanium in terms of silicon. And uh, and the another thing is very very important. The germanium is more costly than silicon. So silicon is less cheaper. That is why we can't use the germanium type of material or germanium type of semiconductor material. But uh, over this, or rather than this, there are a lot of technologies and a lot of research things have been happened to replace this type of conventional materials and uh, uh, there, our uh, researchers and our developers are uh, working on this uh, type of things to find out the new material for our efficient operation of semiconductor devices. Okay. And... Uh, Currently, they are using some uh, diamond type of material in order to replace this type of conventional uh, semiconductor device materials. Okay, so this is my uh, take on the new semiconductor material and uh, the conclusion part uh, is very, very simple that I have thoroughly analyzed this whole uh, portion of my classes. And if you still have any doubt, please uh, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, like my video, share uh, with your friends, relatives, because I uh, want support and dedication 
uh, and there are lot of support things are happening of us as uh, you could feel that our team is only consist of two people but that is not our limitation our limitation is not uh, been bind by that okay i want to make this channel a bigger one so stay tuned and always believe my words because i can feel that that this journey will be very very exciting so stay tuned with my channel like my video share my video and please do subscribe my channel once again i have thoroughly described this contents portion and uh, i repeatedly say that this type of materials are totally missing for uh, on the on the any type of channels or any type of uh, content creators or any type of youtube uh, channel portion or youtube stage okay so stay tuned with my channel and uh, so thank you to participate uh, this type of <coughs> enhancing live enhancing classes these these actually motivate my chances uh, and motivate your chances also so stay tuned and uh, please do let me know that uh, do you support me or if you like my video please let me know in the comment section below and uh, so thank you and goodbye